Hi, I'm Drexel Dupre, reporting from the Bay Area Video Coalition, where for the past three years, the Producers Institute has brought together documentary filmmakers and interactive media people from all over the country for an intense 10 days to develop new media concepts for their films. Joining me now here at the Bayvec Second Life Studio is Cello Alvarez Stelli, producer, director of Sands of Silence, a personal journey into the trafficking of women. She was invited to Bayvec to develop the game SOS Slaves, accompanying the film, which is in the early stages of production. Cello, you have one of the main characters of the film identified, as I understand, a Mexican-American woman who was forced into prostitution. She was kidnapped by a trafficking ring and taken to a place in Chiapas. They were bringing other women with breastfeeding age babies. And once they got to this place, the, the traffickers would force them to exchange the babies among themselves so that they couldn't escape. When our character succeeded in escaping because she tried three times, she had to leave her baby behind and then come back and recover her baby and pay a huge ransom for the baby because she was told that it had been sold already. You investigated sex trafficking for years, even before this film. What, what have you found is the motivation for the traffickers to be in this uh, horrific business? Yeah, I think it's power and obviously money. Sex trafficking is a huge business and increasingly becoming a one of the best businesses in the planet, better than even drug trafficking or weapons trafficking, because a woman, you can reuse it. A drug, you consume it, it's gone. The woman, you can reuse it and resale it, and that's what happens until the point where they become sick, and many of them do. Now, you told me in an earlier conversation that there's a huge demand for women in Western European countries like your own, Spain or, or Germany, where I'm from, mostly from the Eastern European countries. How is the trafficking different from girls coming into the United States? Those girls tend to be a little younger in age. Usually they're forced out of their villages by poverty or by dreams of a better life. Many of them get trapped either in situations of sexual slavery or in situations of uh, labor slavery. Many of them, when they approach the border, somehow their families have managed to save some money to pay the coyote. It could be up to $3,000. Sometimes the coyote says, to them, well, don't pay me that money. You can just work for me. So that deal immediately traps them in this situation. They're threatened with killing their families if they try to escape. They portray the police and the immigration services or officers as, as these, you know, the wolves that are going to come and just deport them or send them to prison. So it's very difficult for them to escape. So what can we do or what has to be done in the countries where these girls are being brought into? First, we needed to change our laws in the Western countries that are uh, receivers of these young girls. Up to 1999, our laws didn't distinguish between prostitution and sex trafficking, and we just assumed that everybody who was in prostitution was out of their own will. So then when the trafficking concept started to be introduced, the police went, would, uh, would go out and immediately try to seek who were the younger girls and what was the situation. They wouldn't assume that they were there out of their own will. Will, but they would just start investigating their cases and find out why were they there if they, if they were underage. And that has changed the, the landscape. You're now working on this flash-based video game at Bayvec uh, dealing with this issue. Can something like this even be addressed in a, in a game context, in a game format? Yeah, that's a very good question because the first time I heard about games for social change, something blew my mind. It was like a whole horizon open for me because I said, wow, game, a game for youth that can have a tremendous impact in their education, but in a, in a way that is not really like academically orthodox uh, education, but fun in the best of senses, in, in the sense that it's interesting learning. Our game is a role play game. The player is going to embody certain characters. There is one character is a Latino girl trying to cross the border to the U.S., but there is also another, a young girl who is uh, living in a cocoa plantation in Côte d'Ivoire in Africa, in um, Ivory Coast, and she's enslaved. At daytime, she works like 14 hours gathering the cocoa fruit from the trees, and then at night, she has to satisfy the needs of their overseers uh, along with the other girls that are in the camp. So th th the main point is to show that slavery still exists and that 
you can do something about it and that the people that are enslaved have possibilities to escape. And not only that, but once they escape, that they, there is an enormous support for them. Alcello, uh, working on this project and seeing all the terrible things that men can do, do you ever get burnt out and you just want to give up and... and I mean, do you not lose hope after a while? Actually, I, th I would say it's the opposite. What I find is that when I meet survivors that have been exposed to horrible tribulations and human rights abuses, these are people that found in themselves, inside their souls, if you wish, an incredible strength, not only to overcome the trauma and, and, and be able to lead a normal life, but to even help other people come out of those situations and inspire people to take action against this horrendous crime against humanity. So for me, it's an incredible inspiration. It's just like I feel humbled by my characters and inspired to do more, to take action, to spread the word. And it's always been an inspirational journey. Thank you, Cello, for sharing your journey. The movie is Sands of Silence, produced and directed by Cello Alvarez Stelli. I am Draxter Dupre, Almost Life in Second Life and the 2009 Producers Institute at Bayvec in San Francisco. More conversations to come, many more. Stay tuned. <laughs>